Welcome to Podcastville. The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by my bookie. That's right. It's that season again, you dirty bitches. You've been sitting there fucking grinding at the teeth, building your bankroll, ready to fucking rock, but you're like, what am I going to spend it on? Do I start preseason? Fuck yeah, you start preseason. Why? Because my bookie's here to take care of you. Remember, it's not what you're betting. It's as important as who you're betting with. That's why I always tell people to bet with my bookie. Why? I only recommend the service to my listeners and to the church family that's been good to me. That's why I'm urging you to make your way to my bookie. You win, they pay. That's what it's all about, right or wrong. So join my bookie, and we'll match your deposit dollar for dollar. Use promo code CHURCH, C-H-U-R-C-H, to activate the offer. Right now, you play, you win, you get fucking paid. Visit my bookie online. That's my bookie, M-Y-B-O-O-K-I-E, if you didn't watch Sesame Street growing up. And don't forget to use promo CHURCH. When you create your account to claim up to a thousand and free play. Number two, you're gonna go to jujitsu. It's four months from the holidays. You're a fat fuck. <laughs> you didn't give a fuck about the fucking summer, but now you're like, Jesus, I gotta do something with my body. You're gonna go to FujiSports.com, right? Because it's the best gear you can fucking get in the business. Whether it's the Superado, the Psycho Point Two, the Elemental. Listen, I'm a fat fuck. They pug, they toll, they pull my sleeves. Nothing. I go home, the fucking geese are tip-top magoo. Nobody's ripping. You can't hang yourself with that. You can even hang yourself with one of these fucking sleeves. That's how tough these fucking gears. So go to fujisports.com right now and press in. Church. And get 10% off anything. A shin guard, a mouthpiece. Help out the church. Cut it out, cocksuckers. Go to fujisports.com, press in church, and get your party started. Kick this fucking mule, Lee. Fucking tremendous. God damn, man. I would kill to be able to sing like that. You know what I mean? God damn. Like I said... As actors, comics, we all have like a secret thing, yeah. and that's what I wanted to be a museum. But I was snorting coke. I'm, I'm a musician. <laughs> I would have sold the guitar every two weeks. I would have had to buy a new ukulele. I would have had to show up with a gig with a banjo one week. Where's the guitar, Joe? You're not gonna believe it. It got robbed. You didn't get robbed. You pawned it for a gram, cocksucker. <laughs> Sean Kerrigan. What's up? Pleasure man? to have you on the podcast. Hey man, it's an honor to be on your podcast. No, man. it's great really to is, have man. you on. You uh, you did something for me that I never told you, and I'm gonna tell you today what you did for me. Yeah, that changed that? the game for me. What? Come on, man. Okay, so I booked this movie named Grudge Match with a director who I had worked with before, and De Niro, and fucking Stallone, and LL Cool J, and this guy John Bernard. It was just a, 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 a great cast. The lady Kim Bastinger, and I get flown down to New Orleans, and I go in there a day early, and I go, "Are they shooting today?" And they go, "Yeah, they're shooting." And I go over and I watch the LL Cool J scenes with De Niro. And it's a big hug at first. Everybody's mm -hmm. clapping hands. Mm -hmm. And they do a couple rehearsals, and everything's beautiful. I'm sitting there for an hour. So you're just on the outside. You're just sitting just there. The no one's talking to you. Not a word. Nobody's even saying boo to me. No, nobody's right. talking to me. And I watch the the takes start to happen. And LL Cool J goes into a scene, and he's fucking cut. And then there's another scene. Let's do it mm -hmm. again. And LL Cool J and cut. And I go, what the fuck is wrong with LL Cool J? <laughs> you know, well. It, the same thing happened. So I had to shoot a scene the next day, one tiny scene. Like I was like scene number five, uh -huh. and the shooting started at eight. So I went down there about 12, eight, mm -hmm. and sat around and I watched. I didn't say a word. Nobody talked to me. And up to the part, it, we, they were setting up for mm -hmm. that scene. And I'm shitting pickles. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm yeah, yeah. Your you're about to you're about to act with De Niro. De Niro. Yeah, no warm up with fucking uh, an extra. No uh. warm up with anybody. No warm up <laughs> yeah, with nobody. Right. I would have rather warmed up with anybody, <laughs> but fucking they throw you into the cage with yeah. De Niro. No, that's it, man. You, you step please, out. Yeah, yeah. Kim Bassinger. Like, yeah. Uh, still anybody but and, fucking and, De Niro. And no one. Yeah, no one was like, hey. Yeah, know, like, nobody. Talk to you. All right, nobody. Right, right, so, De Niro comes over. On his own, and he goes, you, whatever, whatever my character's name. And I go, yeah, and I get up, and I shake his hand. And he goes, very nice to meet you. Do you want to rehearse a couple times? I go, sure, absolutely. You know, and he goes, let me just take care of this, and I'll come back. And in that fucking minute, I sit down, and I'm like, I got about five minutes I could get up and just walk the fuck <laughs> out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that's it. Everything comes to your mind negative, like right. the reasons yeah. why... You're not supposed to be here. They miscast you. Yeah. They're, they're looking for a black guy. This is just wrong, you know. And all of a sudden, I got a tap on the shoulder. 
and it's your buddy, John. John Berndahl. And he goes, how you doing, John? And he shakes my <laughs> hand, and he goes, I'm friends with Sean Carrigan, and he said that uh, you're the real deal. I'm like on stage, you're the real fucking deal, da 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 And you know what, man? He was like an angel. Like I looked at him, and I knew, I didn't know who the fuck he was. I just knew that I had seen him yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... You know, for him just to say that dude, now, it's a stand -up dude, man. it gave me, when De Niro came back, mm -hmm. it gave me a little fucking oomph, like, yeah. okay, now yeah. I could deal with this. I still fucked up, because I once that scene happened, I mm -hmm. realized what was happening to LL Cool J. Yeah. When they say action, <laughs> right. and De Niro comes up on yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. you see Goodfellas, yeah. you see yeah. Taxi Driver, yeah. you see... I mean, the first two it's takes, crazy, you just see man. all these it's, movies wow, he did, wow, and you're just like, your, your whole body freezes. You're like, I'm about to do a scene with the priest. Remember when he played a priest with fucking Sean Penn? With one of the worst movies of all time. 84, 85. What was that called, man? What was that terrible movie just called? Just a horrible movie. Yeah, just but, <laughs> but he still did, you know, he still know. had. So what you uh, did for me, I remember coming back and bumping into you in the ha-ha and you know, but I never told you that, that that was... Uh, well, hey, man, you know, d dude, Joey, it, it's because it's true, man. You know, I didn't say anything that wasn't true. You know, John, John, when I remember when when he called me, he was like, hey, man, he's like, there's a there's a comedian, you know, com John's always like checking up on people, man. He's just like, you know, <laughs> John's one of those people, like, he tries to figure out someone's like for real or whatever, you know what I mean? And just like, if they're cool. And, and he goes, he called me, I'm just like, hey, man. This guy, uh, Joey Diaz, he's, uh, he's a comedian. You know him? And I was like, hell yeah, I know him, dude. I said, that dude is the, I, I just you know, bragged about you. I was like, he's hilarious. He's, he's hilarious and he's a great dude. Like you were, cause you were always really cool whenever I saw you, you know? And so I just said, I was like, yeah, man, that guy's the best, man. And uh, yeah, he well, came right over. Then yeah, the next dude. day I spent the whole day so. with him and De Niro just sitting on a bench well, and well, you know how that yeah, goes. I'm yeah. like, I got this fucking guy behind me. Yeah. And I got De Niro and LL Cool J in front of me. This can't be real. <laughs> like, this is like a fucking joke. Mm -hmm. What was more nerve wracking for you, that or stand up comedy in front of thousands? Or, like, what's, what's scarier? Stand up comedy still scares me when I go up in front of eight people or whether I go in front of 300 mm -hmm. other church people. I still get petrified. The fear with De Niro and doing a scene with somebody out of your realm. Like, I did a scene with James Coburn. What was that like, man? Just what do you think it's going to be like? <laughs> yeah. But I wasn't as nervous right. as I was. <laughs> For De Niro. De Niro fucked me yeah. up. Yeah. Man. James Coburn fucked me up on the first take again, <laughs> but I didn't know what had fucked me up. Right. When I did the take with De Niro... I knew what had fucked me up was just too many visuals. Yeah. I saw Cape Fear. Anything De Niro did popped up, and I just froze. And then he came over. He was just <laughs> loosen up. You know, yeah, yeah. And and let me tell you, man, I, I saw the movie. That, you know, I, I'm upset that that movie didn't do better than it uh, than it did. You know, I, and, and it's almost it's weird. It's like I don't know if they like promoted it right or marketed it right. You know, but because I thought that movie was a fantastic movie. Like, here's the here's the. I thing. thought it was when great, man. That movie and you paper. were you were you were funny, man. I was lucky. Yeah, I left man. that. They it kept was, me. It they was put great, me in the trailer man. and shit. It was shit. fun, man. But what fucks up about a movie like that is you expect it, the expectations. But here's the other um, expectation that I keep forgetting: The Raging Bulls are a great movie. It's an mm -hmm. Academy Award winner. But I don't know if you got the memo. It was thirty three years ago. <laughs> Rocky. Academy Award winner. <laughs> Fucking one of the greatest stories of all time. No, I know, man. I get but it, dude. That's 24 no, and no, 17. Yeah. That's 34 and 7. 41. That's 41 fucking years ago. You know, this right. year, this this yeah, this man. last month was the anniversary of Enter the Dragon. Yeah. 45 years ago. Lee, people, of, and I don't blame the youth. It's not their fault. Yeah, but see, that's the thing, man. They should have advertised it like that. They should have advertised it like, look at these, like, fossils like, are gonna, like, in, in, like they're gonna go at it, and you know what I mean? They should advertise it, like, because like, I thought it I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. Movie, if you, you're an actor. You're an yeah. actor, and you've been... Now, when you were a kid, did you want to be an actor? Yeah. 
Really? Yeah, man. You I, felt it so at an early age. For a very early age, man. Uh, Where'd you grow up? <clears throat> I grew up. I grew up in Miami, Florida, and um, but my, grammar school. Yeah, yeah, all, all the way up, all the way up through high school. How was that? It was. It was weird, man. Uh, because uh, I lived down there with my mom, and 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 I was little. I like I hit puberty real late. Where was and, that? If you don't mind me. Uh, he was up in uh, D.C., Northern Virginia. I got like a, I got like a really uh, I got like kind of a dysfunctional family, man. Okay. They, they, but they're but they're cool, man. And they're all cool. Mom and, Irish also. Yeah, yeah, Full yeah, Irish. yeah. Okay, yeah. So and so you got Irish Catholic. Yeah, man. So I was uh, I was living down in Miami, and uh, and. You know, I was I, I was little, and so I just said, you know, when I was when I was a teenager, I just said, hey man, you know, I think I'm just going to start wrestling and boxing. And so I I, I started wrestling in, in in high school, and then uh, I started I started boxing. I would go up, and my dad was an ex pro boxer, and so he would train fighters and stuff. So when I when I spent my summers up there, I was always around boxing gyms and everything, and and so I was always like, you know, wanted to to. Um, to box and then I, I just started competing at both of them and then yeah and then uh and then uh oh you know i did pretty well went to state championships and then and then uh and then i went and i wrestled in college and uh i wrestled at george mason university and and then i had uh, um i had i had a bunch more amateur fights too i was i was boxing and wrestling at the same time and so it's 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 weird man it's weird to talk about all this stuff because you know, a lot of the stuff that I did, you know, athletically and wrestling and boxing, like I never, I never uh, achieved my potential, I think. And I don't know if like, if, if, uh, if that's overthinking, you know, being involved in a sport and everything. But I think every athlete, you know, unless they're like a, cha- a champion, must always feel like they left a little something on the table. And, and now let me ask you this. Yeah. You, you fought pro for one year. Uh, two, years. two years. Two years. What did yeah. you think? I thought. Uh, I thought that. Um, you know, the thing about fighting in the pros <clears throat> is, you know, especially boxing. Uh, it's about having having a good amateur career, so that you can have a good manager that'll get you the right fights, and that's how all boxing starts out. And so you're fighting a lot of guys in the pros that, you know aren't really up to your speed but they, they kind of bring you along you know what i mean you fight guys that you're a little bit better a little bit better and then and then you start getting tested and then they start bringing in uh, you know tougher guys and then and then and then you climb the ranks that way and if you if you if you handle when you get tested you know and by by a guy that's really good you know you can have a career but it's a very small percentage of people that make the big bucks that become the de la hoyas the the mayweathers the bernard hopkins i mean it's it's a very small percentage man and i knew that i was never going to be one of those guys you know and i just when did you find out how old were you when you found out at what level at what you know uh i i fought i fought in the national championships a couple times and uh in the amateurs and there was a guy there was a guy named uh davin king and another guy named stephen cunningham and stephen cunningham ended up being an ibf cruiserweight champion of the world he was he was probably him and davin king these two guys man davin king won the the junior worlds these two guys were the two toughest guys i ever fought and i'd say stephen cunningham was the the toughest because he dropped me in the second and I got up and I finished. I finished the fight. He was the only guy to ever drop me in the amateurs, only guy. And uh, and so he, uh, I I got out of that fight. My dad would always be real hard on me because my dad was my trainer, and so he'd always be real hard on me and he'd say, "Hey, uh, you should have won that fight. You know why the hell didn't you? You didn't do the, you didn't do the things." With, and 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 usually I could understand where he was coming from, but when and when I fought Stephen Cunningham and he and my dad started lighting into me, I was like, hey, 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 pop, that 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 dude, that dude's gonna be a world champion. They're like, I, there's no, like I knew I knew at that moment I was like, there's nothing I can do to beat that son of a bitch, man. He is he was that tough, and and he did. He he ended up becoming an IBF cruiserweight champion, just now like when, I, just like I predicted. Now man. when you walked away from boxing. Mm-hmm. How long were you depressed for? Uh, I was very uh, torn because uh, my dad told me I'd be driving a cab for the rest of my life. 
because you know my dad was training me um and you know we had built a i was eight and oh as a pro um you know i hadn't really fought that many that many tough guys but uh but he was he was like you know so i was starting to build a little bit of a following in the dc area you know i'd get you know start putting butts in seats and uh and i came and told my dad i was like all right well i'm good uh i'm gonna i'm gonna call it quits while i'm ahead and i'm, I'm leaving i'm walking away with house money and what so and he just he said you know i told him i was going to go be an actor and he told me i'd be driving a cab the rest of my life so you talked to him today Oh yeah, yeah. And that, I mean, so then, so then, fast forward a couple of years later, you know, we were at a screening, and and he was supposed to sitting there getting ready to watch this movie I'm in, and he's sitting there, and it was actually the movie I did with John, and so we're sitting in this screening. It was called Mary Mary, and so we're sitting in the screening, and uh, right before the credit, it's <laughs> right before the movie starts, I turn over and or turn to my dad. I go, I go, hey. I uh, thought you'd be dead and gone before you saw me on screen. He's like, you son of a bitch. You always have to remember everything, don't you? So he had told me that. He was like, I'll be dead and gone before. And whatever. This is... how the, Man, this ain't funny, man. No, no. <laughs> it's not know, supposed to be funny. It's too, supposed man. to be... Because listen. Yeah, yeah, The reason... Yeah, you know, we were talking about comedy before. Yeah. I told you how I got addicted to it and how I had grown up working out and lifting weights and all of a sudden... Comedy had just taken over my life. I knew mm -hmm. that it was the only thing I had. No. There was no other hope. There was no other hope for me. Here I am living on Josh Wolf's couch mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, eating 49 cents cheeseburgers from Chili's. Hey, man, I know the feeling, man. Is, what, what, is it called Chili's? No, what's the place that has? Wendy's. Wendy's. Wendy's had the 49 cents chili, <laughs> cup of chili. Right. I go in between, between the chili and the salad. You <laughs> sure. take the heel pick. Yeah, man. I'll eat that horse meat. Yeah. <laughs> and I would get that horse meat in the cup <laughs> with the crackers, hey. and i get two of the yeah. 49 cents yeah. Whopper Junior hey. cheeseburgers. So will I. And yeah. that I'm was the man. struggle. Yeah, man. That was part of the fucking struggle. But I will tell you one thing. I got left back in the seventh grade, and it devastated me. Just devastated me because I knew I was smarter than that. I got left back because I fell in love over a piece of pussy. <laughs> fell in love. Just stopped everything. It stopped my world. <laughs> the smell of a girl's vagina stopped my world. <laughs> fuck homework. Fuck karate. Fuck my mother. <laughs> fuck my stepfather. Fuck Santeria. Oh, fuck dude. everybody. Fuck the church. Yeah. I'm in love. Oh, man. I'm going to marry this fucking girl. I'm going to run off with her. And I got left back. I failed geography. <laughs> I failed like four yeah. fucking classes. And I had to go to summer school. And guess what? Yeah. I fucking failed summer school because I couldn't get my mind off a dry hump in her. And I wasn't even fucking. <laughs> That's the sad thing, Sean. That's how much of a fucking moron I was. I wasn't even banging this chick. I was just yeah. dry humping yeah, her and yeah, telling yeah, her how yeah, much man. I loved her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were going to run off to a Bon Jovi song. Yeah. Bon Jovi wasn't even around. Yeah. Bon Jovi was still finger banging the chick <laughs> and writing songs somewhere. <laughs> right. And I, it was such a devastation, the fucking left back, that I had to get something. I already had the karate. Mm -hmm. I was good at karate. I knew how to go to tournaments, and I could always get a second or a first place in form. And mm -hmm. I would get disqualified for kicking the guy in the face above the, <laughs> the throat. You know? Right. Yeah, I just get carried away. But bam, fuck it. Right. The kid be sitting there. Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know. But something made me get into basketball. I mean, something. How old were you? I was maybe twelve. Oh shit. And I fucking got I'd always loved basketball and I just got into it. And got, it became my everything. It it was part of a machine. If I wasn't doing homework, I started getting A's because I didn't tell my mother I got left back. So I couldn't have my mother go to the school or even suspect. <laughs> Holy shit. So man. I had to make forge forge report cards. Oh, dude. I would I would intercept letters for parent teacher meetings and <laughs> I just fucking, it was, it was horrible. It was horrible. It was the biggest lie I ever fucking put together in my life. And, but basketball was everything. Yeah. I would write coaches. I would write the University of North Carolina. Any ACC team I liked, I wrote the head coach and fucking got their workout. And I just did it. I lifted yeah. weights. I did, and I played against the best competition in Hudson County. Yeah. And I was supposed to start freshman year, you know? Like it was, if you looked at all the grammar schools and everything, I was the forward. And there was another guy, and there was a center, and there were two guards. And I got to my freshman year, and I didn't play. 
this coach just didn't fuck. Oh, man. And it just fucking, yeah. you know, and then in practice, yeah. I'd score like 90 in practice. Like, I would destroy the first team in practice, rebound Why wouldn't your coach play? He just did not like me. We, and people talked to oh. him. They threatened to move me up if he didn't play me. Yeah. He was like, you ain't moving him up. And you know yeah. what, man? I got into drugs. Oh. And I, I I pushed it off. I played from time to time. Mm-hmm. But sophomore year, I didn't go out. Man. And I never played again. And it destroyed me till this day. I made up for it with the comedy. Yeah. But I wouldn't have lasted long knowing that I gave up. I, I gave up at the age of 16 because yeah. I'm not going to. What Cuban is over six feet? <laughs> you know, I was just being honest with myself. <laughs> Give me a Cuban that's over six feet beside Conseco. <laughs> Stephen Bauer was six one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, Cubans aren't meant Manolo. to be fucking tall. Manolo. Yeah, Manolo. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just gave myself a bunch of excuses just as yeah. a cop out. But till today, I still talk to all those kids, and they'll tell you, sure, dog. When you used to rock, you used to rock. I live with that doubt today. Like yeah. till today, I'm like that basket. But it made me not quit comedy. Yeah, well, thank God, man. And look, you know, my, my little brother, my little brother was wrestling in, in in high school, and he was just a he was just a he was just a fuck up, man. He he was he was just always in trouble and everything. And he had the same thing with his wrestling co- his wrestling coaches, and he was he was incredible. He was he had the most single season wins as a freshman, as a freshman in uh in the in the whole school. So it, for a freshman to have the most single season wins was just, you know, he was, it was very impressive. And he just, he got, he got, <laughs> he said right before the pod, I haven't farted for a while. I should have known. <laughs> oh man, did you? I know the one. I had some scouts. <laughs> I, was, uh, big deal. I know it's a seafood. He was blaming on the coconut. Yeah. What does that say to you? Yeah. So, anyways, that was it, man. My, my brother just got messed up, man. That's it. I wasn't growing <laughs> up in Miami. That's uh, just a nightmare for you. And you know, man, I loved it, man. I loved it. All you know, those I'll, Spanish people. Now, now I get to even like you even more because yeah, dude, I was the only white. I was the only white kid on my wrestling team. It was all, all it was yeah, all Cuban, man. All Cubans. All, all Cuban and a couple black guys, man. And you have that was my to, wrestling team. When you're white and you grew up in Miami, <laughs> you have to work a little bit harder. Yeah, I remember when I went to Miami. My cousin was mm-hmm. friends with a white guy. Yeah, that was just tough because he had to be. Yeah, like he had no choice. Now, and I'll never forget, I was being like yeah, 16 right, dude. and him getting out of a car with do? a skateboard and me being yeah. like a New Yorker going, he's fucking nuts. <laughs> because, and I realized, like, oh, white kids in Miami got to double it up. It's like white yeah, chicks from dude. Miami. Yeah, man. They got to suck good dick <laughs> because the competition level is high. If you're a white chick in Miami and you ain't giving up titties, those strict chicks, <laughs> they will suck your dick in the eighth grade. You know what I'm saying? So when you're a white yeah. chick in Miami, you got to work double hard. Yeah. Well, ain't nobody going to dance with you, dog. Ain't yeah. nobody going to fucking take yeah, you to man. the prom because those little Cuban refugee chicks that left their grandfather in Cuba, they're dying to suck a dick. They're going to the movie theater with grandma. In my day, you had to fucking take the grandma to the movie theater with the chick and you know, the, right. the mother or the brother, the gorilla brother or something to the movie theater. Dude, man. Oh, shit, man. I used to go to Red Berry Baseball Camp. Did you ever go to Red Berry Baseball Camp in Miami? I, I, I didn't go to it, but yeah. But I, yeah, 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 yeah. Man. That's like a staple. Yeah. It, it was it was a part of my youth that I really don't talk about a lot. I used to spend my summers. Where did you, did you grow up in Miami? No, I grew up in Jersey, but right. I had a godfather who lived in the falls. He yeah, built yeah. the falls in the sixties right. yeah. by Monkey Jungle, hundred right. thirtieth and hundredth Avenue. He would he was a contractor, right? And he would build neighborhoods. So he would build a house. He'd move into it, and then he'd build four houses that duplicated that house. And he would yeah. sell them. He'd take a note on it from the bank, and he would sell them. Yeah. So I would spend my summers with him, and the summers I had to work. So I went down there. Oh, you had to I would get down there and get bit by red ants. You don't know what life is till you pick up a twig, yeah. and it's filled with red ants, and you got to yeah. run like a girl and put hot water on you or whatever they did uh, to yeah, get yeah, the yeah. red ants off you. Yeah. Miami was a complete. Yeah. I was a city kid. Yeah. My cousins. I don't. I know. I don't know how, how. I'm asking you if you're from Miami. You're obviously not, man. You're from. You where are you from? New, New, New Jersey. Jersey. New yeah. Jersey. New Jersey. And New York man. from Cuba, but then Jersey, grammar school, and high school, pretty much. Yeah, dude. Man, you know, man. I I spent some time up in Jersey, man. Jersey's cool, man. 
my my uh my mom used to run the racetrack at atlantic city racetrack or um yeah in atlantic city man and uh and she's uh yeah she so she used to spend her summers up there and then uh she'd come down she come down to florida now for uh the winter time she runs in uh the restaurants of the racetrack like Gulfstream and then monmouth park and all. Dude, i love jersey man monmouth park that's a good racetrack yeah that's yeah, jersey nice girls too man they're, they're, you like jersey girls oh hell yeah man they're they're, they're cool man it's it's dude, I, I love jersey man that's crazy i love it too i have no problems with jersey i think it's like anywhere else now it's overcrowded the traffic you know mm -hmm. but jersey has some beautiful parts i i i will never be ashamed of growing up where i did i think it made me who the fuck i am it really yeah. did i really enjoyed coming out from hudson yeah. county i really did so today I get little fucking notes on Twitter from people and shit from mm -hmm. Hudson County. I loved no. it. I, I fought in Newark, New Jersey. My my uh, sixth pro fight was in Newark, New Jersey at the Robert Treat Hotel. Jesus and Christ. and uh, this guy this guy knocked me down twice in the second round, and then I came back and knocked him out in the third round. But it was uh it was um that was one of those moments where like I was like you know what I don't know if I need to box anymore man <laughs> this is just it's too much man and and uh and and so then uh i went to the dressing room and i was buttoning up my pants and all of a sudden i was like wait a minute what what just what just happened like i had a, like a moment where like you know like after a heavy night of drinking and you don't really remember like you know you know what you did the night before all of a sudden then my corner man charlie king was he goes he's like what are you talking about man i'm like charlie just tell me what just happened and then he like as he started telling me it all came back to me and that's when I was knew I knew that I have a concussion, <laughs> and so it's like I probably had plenty of concussions, man. And uh, yeah, dude, it, that's why I got out of the sport of boxing, man. Now, how was long it, man? was the transition between boxing and acting? Did you go to an acting class right away? Did you go to an acting school? Did you move out here? Yeah, I I went to New York for a little while. I was working at the China Club. Remember okay. the China yeah, Club, yeah, dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was bouncing there, man, uh, for about six months, man. Guys like uh, 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 Jimmy Vanetti and I, uh, Kirk McLean. These guys were just legendary guys that ran and ran the you know the security at all these clubs, man. And it was just it was just it was a fun time. What years were these? This was uh, this was October. 2000 to uh to january 2001 no no not october i'm sorry august so it was like six months it was six months i was there man and so it was just man it was just it was incredible man and did you take acting classes in new york yeah it was uh yeah it was great man it was uh i took some acting classes there but i was you know i was having no luck and i ran into michael rapaport at the china club you know Michael Rappaport? He's been on the podcast. Get the, dude, yeah. I, I'm the biggest fan of this guy. Yeah, yeah. So he comes up, to, so I, so he's there, and I and I walked up to him, and I go, hey, man. I go, uh, you're, uh, you, you made it as an actor. Like, did you make it here in New York, or did you make it in L.A.? And he goes, do you want to do film and television? I was like, yeah. He goes, you need to move to L.A. And then I was like, all right. A couple weeks later, packed up my, my truck and made it out to L.A., man. What year was this? This is January 2001. And uh, and so then I came out here, man, with a bunch of group of actors. We started doing casting director workshops and stuff like that. And I just, man, I didn't know my ass from my elbow, man. I really didn't. What kind of casting directors were you meeting with at the time? Do you remember? Oh, God. Uh, I, 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 I think Mar Marty Saida was one of them because uh, I got a part. I got a part, you know, I got like an under five. It was my first uh, my first role, and so I'm um, trying to remember some of the others. I can't I can't remember. So I actually met with my my agent, and he turned me down, and then he didn't, he re-signed me ten years later. He signed me ten years later. So it was I was very green, man. It was it was like a green. It was like like I didn't know I didn't know shit. I, listen, when I got when I moved yeah, here, I didn't know shit, man. When I moved here, I was in Seattle. Some guy comes up to me after a show, and he goes, "You're perfect for a pilot." I am shooting. I swear to God, Sean. Right. I'm a fucking, I'm out on bail. I'm living with a stripper. I, I'm fucking basic. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I mean, I didn't know what I was going to do. And it was December of 96. Mm -hmm. 
It was Thanksgiving of 96. That was the weekend. He went to visit his family. And he just had, that was the second year in a row somebody approached me over the Thanksgiving weekend. That was from L.A. That was visiting family up there and saw me. Mm -hmm. So the second time he came up to me, this guy, and he's like, uh, you know, you want to do this pilot, blah, 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 blah. Let me look into it. Give me your contact info. And I... I didn't know what to think. Like, I didn't know what to think. He You're goes, like, hey, man, what are you selling, bro? He goes, it's a CBS pilot, huh. and it's uh, you'd be playing a Spanish bartender that, uh, you know, whatever. I don't even remember. Like, yeah. A Spanish bartender where they come for information to, like, a snuggy bear, a comic type of guy, but very serious, and they always right. have to work me over for information. <laughs> come on, Joey, you know the information, <laughs> that type of shit. And it was called Bronx County. Right. They were looking. That was perfect. And they called and they called again and then I got a probation violation and they wanted to throw me in jail so I told the guy from CBS and he goes let me fucking make some calls and they called the fucking judge and wrote a letter it was crazy dude man and I fucking got out of Seattle the guy's like don't come back and I came down here and they wanted me to go to counseling classes for assault and I never went to the classes so they but I got down here and I fucked up so bad on that mm -hmm. pilot mm -hmm. that I was like, "That's this is never going to happen again. What a shame. Oh, dude. Like, what a shame. Yeah. yeah. What an embarrassment mm -hmm. I am that mm -hmm. I didn't know about acting classes. Mm -hmm. Like, I, when, before we started the podcast, we were watching those Steven Seagal movies and Lethal Weapon. I still remember watching Amazing. Blind Date. Oh, my God. With, with Bruce Willis, with Bruce man. Bruce Willis and Kim yeah. Bassett. Oh. And telling my roommate, when are you going to call your camera buddy and tell him about me? Like, I thought you just made calls. Oh, you, <laughs> right. Like, I just thought, like, like my friend told yeah. me one time, like, I have a friend that works yeah. cameras in L.A. Yeah. He shot this movie. I didn't leave that guy alone for three years. When are you going to call your buddy tell him about me? I'm a fucking <laughs> savage. <laughs> like, I didn't know what I Call your buddy was. and tell yeah. him about me, yeah. Like, I didn't know. Uh, it's so funny. That's like, sometimes you, you'll you be talking to, like, an aunt or somebody, and, and they're like, hey, so... Um, you know, we were we were watching that CSI the other night, and you know who we thought would be good on there? Sean would be good on there. Can you? Why don't you call them? Do yeah, I, why don't you easy. tell them? Yeah, yeah, it's just, that easy. Just yeah, just call somebody. Like I love when people say that. Yeah, like, dude, hey, you're like, come on, man. Yeah, it like, work why like don't that? you? It doesn't work that way. <laughs> right. So I didn't know. Like, I wish it worked like that. I, I didn't know what was going on, right. Sean Carrick, and like I was <laughs> right, Sean Carrick, and I watched a thousand movies. And I had no idea about nothing. And then I signed with this manager. Nah. And he's like, yeah, stand up is great, but you're gonna have to go on auditions. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's never gonna happen again. I'm not going on auditions. And he shot me around. Right. And I, it came down to two agents. Like he sent me pictures to like 35 agents. And I was turned out by 33 of them. <laughs> and only two agents <laughs> signed me. This dude that's still around, yeah. I'm not gonna say his name, he's right. still a bum. Oh. He's still a bum. Oh man. That he still he wanted money to send out your envelopes and shit, one of those type of people. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, you have to pay me a hundred a month for postage and handling until you book something. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and these two beautiful black girls called the coloring book. Wow. And you had to send out all your headshots with different colored paper. And they were called the coloring right. book for a reason. They specialized with kids and characters. But she had me out two days later. Like, she was sending me out two days All later. All the time. And I'm not Sean Carrigan. I'm going in there. <laughs> What's that mean, man? Not, I'm going in there not even close. Uh, like, just shaking, uh, them telling me, thank you for coming in. Like, thank you for coming in. Mm -hmm. And then finally I said, okay, I think I got to take an acting class. And I took an acting class, and he taught me the basics of scene study first, right. Frank Magna. And then I said, fuck this. And the biggest class in town was uh, not Leslie Kahn, but the other one. Ivana? Ivana Chubbuck. Ivana Chubbuck, yeah. So I went to Ivana Chubbuck. Oh, that's great, man. And that guy really broke it down for me. Mm -hmm. But while I was going to his class, I was booking. Yeah. Like, wow. I, I had booked... When I booked basketball, I didn't even know what the line was. I didn't know what action cut. Like, I, and I was coked up the night before. I hadn't slept. <laughs> and I was the first scene up. Huh. And I still remember them going, all right, on, the, on your marks. 
I, what do I get bent over the race? <laughs> and then there was no, I couldn't roll. I couldn't roll the skate. Like I was supposed to roll the skate in basketball. When I go away, I'm not on roller skates. I just made believe. They fucking, <laughs> they fucking hated me. Like people were hiring me and just hating on me. Oh, dude. Like hating me. Do you understand what that's yeah. like? And people at home never had that idea. Like hating me. And once I went to acting class, I got a little bit more, and then I took a cold reading workshop. What, do you think you, you think maybe you started respecting the craft more when she started studying it? Uh, they informed me of what right. was happening. Uh, what was uh. happening? I didn't know what was happening. I don't have any fucking idea. And you're sending me scripts, and, and you know, <laughs> I'm going in to read with fucking the actors from the yeah. movie. My hand yeah. is shaking. I had no idea. People think that you just step on the lot and you're like, yeah, yeah. shake and rock. Is this all these levels of intimidation oh, and man. fear? And it, and, and it doesn't stop, man. It, it doesn't, doesn't stop. stop. It's just, it's just, and it's. <laughs> but my wife got me a workshop, a cold reading workshop mm -hmm. with the guy who cast Godfather 2, Donnie Brasco, and a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Sleepers. Mm -hmm. And he brought in, this really helped me. He brought in the audition tapes from Sleepers. Oh, that's and he cool, made man. us look through all the audition tapes of the people that had auditioned mm -hmm. and why we would pick those people. And it gave me oh, a different wow, perspective. Oh, wow, that's cool, man. And that helped me. Yeah. And you know who took that uh, class with yeah. me? That was 2001 at UCLA. Hmm. Guess who I sat next to? Brian Callen. Oh, is that right, man? He I met him Brian. in New York yeah. with Rogan. And wow. here he was in the yeah. class talking to chicks, you know, the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> Sit over here. It was yeah, me and him yeah. with surrounded by 92 fucking women and that helped me and then i did the christian kaplan workshop God. and then he put me in the movie taxi Dude. two weeks later he called me he goes come and audition wow. for this they had given it to bobby slayton already but he liked me better and he gave it to me yeah. and bobby till this day would say you motherfucker <laughs> you stole fucking taxi from me but it took me three years to really get my acting chops up yeah but still man you did it you know you like, didn't. how long did it take you to really get your acting chops up? What? Well, what happened to me is I fell on my I fell on my goddamn face, man. Like, I, like I did a, I did a movie. It was so bad. They said they said Sean Kerrigan has a better chance of modeling leather jackets than ever being an actor. I was like, I was like, that what? was the review. Yeah, dude, it was some cold blooded shit, man. It was cold blooded, and uh, so that's why, like, I was like. I was like, man, I gotta. I, I just wasn't ready. I, I did a, I did a, I did a TV show called Next Action Star back in two thousand four, and it would. They thought it was going to be like the next American Idol for actors, and so they auditioned people all over the country, and then they got to, they got to L.A. and they and they select fourteen girls, fourteen guys, and then you have screen tests each week. You know, and they eliminate more people, eliminate people, eliminate people until finally the pe winners of each screen test for each week for, for 10, 10 weeks, uh, that person gets to star in his own action film, the guy and the girl who win it. And so me and a girl named Corinne Van Richtergroot, <laughs> it's a mouthful, uh, we run it, we, we won it, and then, uh, and then we got to star in our own TV movie out in Cleveland and we went and we shot it and I had to I had to take a fake name because the, the show hadn't come out yet and NBC thought it was going to be huge so like I was walk I had a, a an alias Sonny Briggs or Sonny Hopkins and then my character name was Sonny Briggs and the movie just sucked it just they they called it bet your life they should have called it bet your career <laughs> Who directed it? I mean, did they do it like a right job everywhere? Or you know, man. Who wrote I, it? And was... it, it, it? Look, I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, dog any anybody that helped make it because I think that what they were working with was a, an actor. I wasn't ready to star, and I I wasn't ready to star in an action my own action film. I wasn't ready to carry a film. You know, you got to understand, like you're gonna get like rewrites sometimes or like it's raining outside to, uh, tomorrow so now we can't we can't shoot the exterior we're gonna shoot this interior on page 62 learn you know you got those 10 pages right like you have to like it's just I wasn't ready I wasn't ready for that level and uh, <laughs> and you know so then I just I you know I I didn't work for a little while 
uh, in TV and film probably about six years. It was, you know, <laughs> it was, I didn't book a TV or film job in six years. And, uh, and then I just said, fuck this, man. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go out like this. So I, I, I started studying at Playhouse West. I, I started, I just learned the, the craft of acting. I, I went back in the beginning, beginning class, worked my way up to the advance, went through the whole program. Uh, it's Meisner. And, and, and then, so I did that. And then, and then I just started doing stand up. I was like, I gotta like, I gotta be able to make fun of this, this situation or I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to get working again. And then next thing you know, man, I started working. I started working as soon as I started doing stand-up comedy. I started working. It, in it TV helped and you audition it's a lot more. Yeah, man. I, it, you know, I just I think it just helped with a lot of things, man. It was it was like, just it helped me. It helped me like talk about like I had a chip on my shoulder, man, for a long time. You know, I was like this, you know, ex pro boxer. Me and John Bernthal would go out and we get in all kinds of bar fights and shit all the time. It's just like it was just a very weird life, man. I was in. It was a very like it just just well, why a it, little bit of a frustration. Yeah, it's a like bit a little of anger, yeah, a little chip and, on your shoulder. Hey, yeah, man. Have, you know when things don't go your way for a while, yeah, you become the and, and it's a phase that you go through. Yeah, and man. You, it's a certain age. Yeah, and age. and I had failed at the movie. That yeah, I, I, no, this no. was my shot, man. My one shot. You know they they said that because they said the show was going to be like the next American Idol, and it just bombed. It just was terrible. And they, what network was it on? It was on NBC, man. Jesus Christ. It was Christ. on NBC. And, and they thought it was going to be... What happened was they shot it like the real world. They didn't shoot it. They didn't shoot it like what people wanted to see, which was the acting train, the acting classes we took with Howard Fine, the stunt training. Howard Fine on Fairfax? Yeah, dude. Howard Fine was our acting coach. On for, Fairfax? For, yeah. The old guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, stu oh, the studio, God. Howard Fine Studio. And so I, I think that is is I think he's on Fairfax now. I'm not sure he exactly. Was, yeah, that yeah. He but was. he was on Melrose at, at some point, and and right. that's when we like trained. But but he's a fa he's a fa like fantastic acting teacher. Uh, but but so that's where we, they didn't see get all that shit. They saw like people like arguing over <laughs> like bullshit. Like real world. <laughs> like yeah, yeah man. Yeah, people yeah. were like, I thought we were gonna see the like next Auditioning new, next action star. Out. Like what? Right. Like all the stunt training and all the. The acting classes and all that, which all is all stuff we did, but they just. Where was the first place you got on stage at? Uh, at um, oh god, what's the name of that that place in North Hollywood, man? The Ha Ha? No, 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 no. no. Uh, it's a restaurant that used to have an eleven o'clock open mic. God. Italian restaurant? No, 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 man. I can't. I can't remember the name right now. Li liquid, liquid, uh, liquid zoo. In Van liquid Nuys. zoo, yeah. liquid zoo in Van Nuys. That was it, man. Liquid zoo, and I, I told just terrible Did jokes. Did you go by yourself? No, my my ex wife went with me, oh, and Jesus so Christ. and so she saw it. And it, <laughs> it was just terrible. It was just awful. What made you go back the second time? Uh, because I got a couple laughs on some gross shit that I said, and uh, <laughs> and then I just I just. You know, I just, I just, I, I don't know, man. I just, I read Steve Martin's book that said "Born Standing Up" or called yeah, "Born good Standing book, Up." Good book, good book. And he talked about how, like, how many times he bombed, and I was like, "Fuck, man!" You know, like I used to get my fucking ass kicked in boxing, but I, it's like, the same but, thing. but I got through it. It's an art. I got, I got through the it's times yeah. when I sucked. You know, I got through it, and and so now it's like. All right. Well, I'm I'm gonna get you know. You just get to where you know, you you know. You're just gonna hope hope to get better. So it's so weird how when you or just work at it is what I'm when saying. When you're an actor, yeah, and you add stand up to your repertoire, even if you don't do it professionally, you do it as an exercise. No. Like I saw Emilio Rivera from Sons of Anarchy. Mm -hmm. I met him 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And he was acting, but he said that something about stand-up helped him audition. Yeah. And years later, at an audition, after I had auditioned a hundred times and sucked dick on all of them, <laughs> I learned how to take the Mitzi concept. When you mm -hmm. showcase for me, you got three minutes. Right. When I call you up and I go, I'm putting your life's hands on three minutes, you're going to hang up the phone and go, what the fuck? do I do in three fucking minutes? Wow. Well, 
it's the same amount of time when you go into an audition room. To yeah, read. yeah, it's true, man. You got three minutes, so you got three minutes to make them to love you, fall in love with you. So I started taking that concept of stand up, and br- like I went in for fucking movies that you would die. After I did, I think by two thousand, I got rid of the manager and the mm-hmm. coloring book disbanded by themselves. The one chick's husband cheated on her with a white chick. You don't do that to a sister. And they just just fell apart at the seams. And I signed with the guy. Here's the weirdest story in the world. The manager I was with was a badass motherfucker. Mm -hmm. He had grown up in Beverly Hills, went to Beverly Hills High, Mm -hmm. went to Syracuse with the whole crew, and knew everybody. And I'll never forget that we were all sitting there when we were having a meeting one day and he goes listen I gotta get you an agent I can't keep sending you out like this rogue in those days managers weren't supposed to send you out and really in 97 and 98 no oh wow managers were not supposed to send you out wow Jewish managers didn't give a fuck (laughs) they were trying to get the lights paid so they didn't give a fuck (laughs) Jeff was that manager oh wow but Jeff wasn't getting me out for co-stars Jeff was giving me nine-page oh, NYPD yeah. oh, blue right. leads. Yeah. And I'm going in there, and it's Danny Trejo and another Mexican from fucking this, and, and I'm like, oh. you know. <laughs> like, the first ten auditions I went in, I lost in the room just signing my name. <laughs> when I turn around, that's the guy from Goodfellas in the freezer. Yeah. That, you know, right there. That's yeah. that guy. That's yeah. this guy. That's that yeah. guy. I would sure. lose it. That's the auditions he had me going in into the beginning. So how did you finally get over all that? Stand up. Right. I did a storyteller show in the belly room one night. And it came to me. Wow. That when I go in for an audition, I'm telling the story. It's not just, hi, how are you? Good to see you. Huh. Slate, my name's Joey Diaz. Okay, let's read those two lines. One of the first auditions I, I figured it out was the James Coburn one. I figured out that it's not just one line. It's a line on paper. That doesn't mean I'm going to turn. I my job is to turn yeah. that one line into three. Yeah, and that's what I would do. I would give them a beginning, a middle, and an ending, just like a stand-up set. So no matter what that thing was, I did it opposite. And I always won the scene. Wow. I always had the last line. I don't give a fuck what you wrote, bitch. Mm-hmm. Correct me in the room. But when I walked in there, I bulldogged you. I learned how wow. to bulldog the casting wow. people. And guess who I learned that from? A pitcher by the name of The Rocket. Oh, uh, Louis Dion? No. The other fucking lunatic from Boston Red Sox that ended up in Houston. That was a oh, bully. Oh, uh, was a Clemens? Bully. Clemens. Roger Clemens. Oh, Roger Clemens. If you ever watch Roger Clemens pitch. What do you mean he was a bully? Oh, he was a big time bully. Was he? Oh, but you didn't see it on TV. Oh, wow. You saw it live. No shit. You saw it live. He beat you without throwing a pitch. Wow, man. So now that's what you have to start doing when you go into an audition. You have to beat them without saying. Like one time I walked into, if you see it today, every once in a while people go, Joey, I just saw you on uh, a thing. Were you an extra on that? What's that show? Oh, uh, Uh, How I Met Your Mother. That or Two and a Half Men? Two and a Half Men. Two and a Half Men, too. But How I Met Your Mother, I went in there, my pants ripped, and I had no underwear on. (laughs) And I asked the cast director if she saw the Cuban egg roll. And they just died. And I'll never forget, like, they were dying so hard that I walked out, and my agent called, and he goes, go back and read. You didn't even read. Yeah. And then they put me on the set, and I was the wrong dude. Right. But I got to that level by starting to book one-liners. Mm-hmm. One liners that I turned into fucking three. Yeah. Like, I became the fucking Captain Kirk of the Enterprise. Let them tell me to read it how it's written. <laughs> read it how it's written. Okay. Right. But I already got you. It's too late. It's like when you go to court and you just go, you know that Lee raped the chick one time. I, I, that's irrelevant. Scratch that from the jurors. <laughs> the jurors, please disregard that comment. It's too late. You made the comment. Yeah. You already hit it out of the yeah. park, bitch. Sure. So I would make sure on the first read, I hit it out of the park. Yeah. My style. Ba, ba, da, ba, 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 ba. I remember going on ABC pilot one time, and when I and I had, it was about a guy who was white trash, mm-hmm. who was fucking put in the neighborhood, 
and he was uh, he had like a uh, Kmart swimming pool and he was watering it like with slippers on and whatever in his mind he came from the ghetto this was like big time living he had a little Puerto Rican barbecue little little hibachis Man. and he had three hot dogs on there and he was this guy he felt that he was a big shot I fucking put tidy whities on I weighed 380 huh. I put a men's a t-shirt like this and sweatpants when I walked in my plan was to walk in and pull my pants down and have the tidy whities and blow them out of the water oh no that's how you audition right yeah you audition yeah. to be remembered yeah. you yeah, don't sure, audition man. to book the part yeah. you audition to be where'd remembered. you learn that from Milton's Milton Kitsellis no yes that's where you learn that from, yes, isn't it, man? I, I learned it from Milton Casellas and yeah, dude. the guy from The Godfather too. Yeah. You don't audition to book the role. Yeah. You audition to be remembered. Yeah. So I walked in the room, and the ladies were, great that you made it. Can you give us one minute to confer? When they turned around, <laughs> I dropped those sweatpants, <laughs> right. and I took their leg out. And here I am. I took my sneakers off and everything with my big Fred Flintstone feet. Right. I got a pair of tidy whities. Yeah. I took my shirt off and I had a gut and tits, and I may believe I was watering the thing. And I go, look at me. And they both, all three of them, turned around at once. And I go, living like a fucking doctor. <laughs> Bam, <laughs> done. End the class. They said, put that on the tape. They died right there. They go, just put the, just put the camera on. Say that one more wow. time, just wow. like that, without the fucking. Yeah. And I went like, oh, look at me, living like a doctor. <laughs> Bam, done. <laughs> I walked out of there. I could have told everybody, go home. Like, go home. The same for you. You know what I'm saying? Go home. The yeah. same for you. Yeah. I didn't. I had yeah. too much class. You're like, yeah. But, but by the time yeah. I walked yeah, to the car. for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. By the time I got to the car, I would get the call. Because I would. F I didn't go in there. Once I wow. figured out, you don't go in there to book the row. It's just uh -huh. like stand-up comedy would happen to me the last six months. I was doing mm -hmm. stand-up to please the audience. Right. You know what? Since when am I a fucking gorilla monkey that's going to play a drum? I'm there to do what I do. And whether you like it, that's your uh -huh. problem. That's the problem with stand-up now. They're flipping it on you, and we're starting to believe that. I started to believe that. I started stand-up to make you feel uncomfortable and to make you think. And to let you know that what I'm telling you is the truth. I'm, I know right. that. Right. Those people in Thailand, that thing that happened in Thailand, he was going to fuck those kids in the cave. I'm telling you, I don't give a fuck what you think, that he was a Christian, it was raining out. It's been raining out a lot. Yeah. You don't see me going into no cave with 12 other motherfuckers. <laughs> he was going to fuck those little Jap kids. There's no two ways about it. And I'm letting everybody know. I don't give a fuck what oh, they tell man. you. Nobody's going to tell you that coach was Sandusky <laughs> Jr. He was studying the readings of Sandusky and shit. Sandusky read a book in prison <laughs> called How to Sandusky Molest Little Sandusky Boys. Jr. This motherfucker took him 2.0. Oh, he didn't take him to the basement. He took him to the fucking <laughs> cave. At least Sandusky <laughs> took him to the basement, fuck you in the ass. Yeah. Let you go home with a balloon. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> This fucking time, motherfucker. No escape. No escape. No escape. I'm fucking you to death, and I'm leaving you here for the crocodiles. But they oh, fucked man. up with the bicycles. Nobody believes me. Yeah. Nobody believes me. That's what really happened. And that's what you have to let <laughs> they people fucked know. Up with the bicycles. When they leave there, they're like, I don't know. Joey had a point about that shit. Why would he take oh, him to man. a cave? So what? It was raining. You stand up to a, under a tree. Yeah. It's fucked up what stand up is. Yeah. And you watch the guys like Kennison and Dice that were really pushing the envelope, and you're like, that's what I have to be doing. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't work for everybody. I mean, also, man, like, yeah, man, it's also like, it's what, what your what your flavor of comedy is, man. You know what I mean? Like, 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 I love, I, I, like, that's what I, I love people that push the fucking envelope. You have man. to. I ain't got time. I'm fifty five. Yeah, man. You yeah, want me to dilly dally? Huh. I don't give a fuck about Netflix, HBO, Showtime. Huh. I'm looking to rip that fucking stage apart now. I'm looking to leave smoke up there, and I, I want to. When I step off there, I want the battlefield to look like fucking, like I shot everybody, like like Vegas, like a battlefield. Like that's what you're supposed to leave them. Like people laying all over the place, bleeding. That's what comedy is. Yeah, bombarding the fucking audience, and I lost man, that's that. A great point, man. I wow, lost man. that, and that's it's the same point. thing when you go into an audition. You know, I still remember. Uh, oh, I know what I'd say to you. So, I got this guy Jeff Gatlin. He's got connections at fucking CAA. He's got connections everywhere. But he goes, dog, there's an agent I want you to meet. You, you're not going to like her. <laughs> but we're going to take a meeting anyway because she's the best agent for you. Right. And at that time, if you went up Highland 
in the middle there where there's a parking lot. There used to be an old building. Where they, like, you were scared when you parked in the underground. You were really scared. Like, the underground parking in there, you were like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I used to sell porn across the street from there. When I first got here, there was a job telemarketing that you saw at porn. Eight bucks uh, an hour. Uh, and you went in there and just called hand job places and said, I got the latest... Sure. Lucy Lou tape yeah. ended up the ass yeah. and they would order and I quit after a week it wasn't for me I, st- I went and sold cigars <laughs> but it was just a shitty neighborhood Highland and then Hollywood yeah it uh, was man above above fucking Hollywood Boulevard after 9 o'clock at night you better bring a weapon Jack walking into the 101 there right there yeah. that used to be bad news Yeah, really bad wow. that corner there with the subway and everything right there that turns into Franklin Yeah, that used to be an island with a building so I ask him where to meet him, and he tells me, meet me at that island. And I go, you want me to meet you with a fucking agent? That's where their office is? Like, everybody's office is on Wilshire. (laughs) Some people's offices were on the lot. You want me to go? You're telling me that the agent you want me to go meet, and it was Daniel Hoff Agency. Oh, shit. And they were on the fourth floor of the scariest building. When you press the elevator, the elevator took forever. This is 90. This is This is... This has to be 1999, 2000. No shit. And I met her a week before Christmas, huh. and her name was Nancy Apt, and she was from Chicago. And the insight was on the street, the word on the street was, yeah, you could go to this agency and that agency, but if you really want to work, this lady don't fucking stop. Oh, wow. Huh. And like, I mean, she was like that. The, the, she was that lady without the cigarette. Mm-hmm. How can I help you today? You know, <laughs> fucking headshots all over her desk. I Dan- need a gin martini. Danny was in the back, so <laughs> I'm doing that's... commercials. Right. I was with Sutton Bart and Minari. Danny was in the back doing commercials. It was a three man operation. Wow. It was that's a crazy. Three man operation. That's crazy, man. So she came out, Danny came out and said, I don't need you for commercials. I'm with Sutton Bart and Minari. Cool. Huh. And then she goes, I want to sign you. I go, ah, let me talk to my manager. We left that building. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Like, Dog, if She's you want to go out, that's the lady. That's the lady. Combined man. with me, and it was the truth. You know, I found one of those notebooks wow. about two years ago. That's when I was going on three TV shows per week mm-hmm. and two feature films. And I'm talking about, name it. I could read. Damn, she was getting you out like that, huh? Like that. Wow. This has to be. 2000 to 2003, before the computer, yeah. you, they would hand submit. Oh, it was a different time, man. It was a different was Thomas time. Guides and shit. Thomas Guides. Yeah, yeah, they have a Thomas Guide to get you around. You better have a headshot. You better have a headshot you on you. You better not yeah. show up without a headshot. You had to get <laughs> 100 right, headshots man. every two weeks. Yeah, dude. At $49, yep. dog. They would call you and yeah. say, we need more. Yeah. But you, as an agent, as a client, I would show up every week. I would alternate headshots mm-hmm. every week. Every Sunday, I would staple 50 more. Yep, yep. You had to cut the sheets 8 by 10 yeah, exactly. to cut the match sheet, the yeah. headshot. Dude, did it all, man. You yeah. think I'm fucking kidding you. It yeah. was work, Jack. You didn't just fucking act. Yeah. You had to staple them perfectly. I, the I'd always go to Kink, or Kinko's FedEx and, and use the slider yeah, machine the slider to, machine. to cut the resumes. Yeah. Well, there used to be a yeah. FedEx right on Sunset. That, right. First, it was uh, Mr. Chow. Right. Mr. Chow was across from the Guitar Center. So he did all my resumes. He would slice them for me, and I would staple them. Mr. Chow's printing. Wow. I, would, I lived in there. The headshots right? were La Brea yeah. and Sunset behind Hoy's Walk. That was the headshot place. You were in there every three weeks, I, I, spending seventy nine dollars. Did you? Was Ray the retouchers around then? Ray the retoucher yeah, yeah, was there. Yeah. So people go retouch, retouch this. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm yeah, ugly. Yeah. You yeah. Can, nothing's going to save this face. <laughs> Forget Ray the retoucher. That was a big thing back then. <laughs> We love your headshots, but you have a little blemish on your head. Yeah, yeah well, that gives me character. Right. I'm not right. giving Ray the retouch 80 bucks to retouch, and then you look like <laughs> right. a fucking, like you died. <laughs> they put that fucking uh, uh, funeral makeup on you, on your headshot. You're like, yeah. trying to smile. Yeah. But no, fuck Ray the retouch. I was brutal with those people. Brutal. Right. I used to tell them, use the headshots I got. And then once we book a job, then I'll get a new yeah. headshot. Because they always give you a list. Sure. You have to take a picture with that, and you call the guy $300. No, no, no. I got a Puerto Rican with a camera, and for $29, he does fucking 100 headshots, 20 poses. He even lets me shoot him at the end. You know what I'm saying? They'll do the, you're a carpenter. There was agents that would say, you got to come back with a picture of Lee as a baker. She's going to be throw a picture of you throwing a pizza up in the air. Come on, uh, man. 
in 97, oh, when man. you went, listen, yeah. dog, they yeah. had, first of all, every year they have a new scam that you have to sign up for sure. to help you expedite your career. Right. It costs you sixty nine ninety five a year, something. There's always something. Huh. And then, in those days, it was CastNet. Listen, if you really want a movie, CastNet, oh my God. It right. goes right to casting directors. $69. Oh. It was CastNet. Yeah. It was... Uh, it was CastNet. I mean, to become an actor in those days, it cost you a lot of money. Yeah. Because you had to get the right headshots. Mm -hmm. They wanted a headshot for each thing they saw you at. Mm -hmm. So if Sean Kerrigan came to me, he would be the Irish priest. I want a headshot as you as a priest. I want a headshot as you as a construction guy. Right. I want a headshot as you as a boxer. Yeah. I want so they wanted all these they headshots. All that stuff. Are you crazy? People were going yeah. broke in this town. They wanted 400 for four poses of you, yeah. like, you know, with a kid. Dude, you, what, and, and what, did, what did all these people that had all these places do, man? Where did they go? Like, how, like you know, because it's like, you, you're, you're thinking to yourself, you're like, these guys, I mean, what, are they all doing digital now? Is that what's happening? Like, everything is digital. They, they, they had to have, like, lost all their, all their shit, man. Okay, across the street from Ralph's, there's a Chinese restaurant, there's a Russian market. And down the block, that whole corner at one time. Mm -hmm. When I tell you that that whole corner, he had 10 people behind the counter. You had to pick a number to go in that corner. It was to get headshot uh, duplicate. So you went to La Brea. Oh, so, wow. okay. So first you had to go get a headshot, Lee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 300. Then you had to take the sheet to your agent. And they, and had, they to had to approve it. it. Yeah. They, had they to wanted. Them. So they want, out of the 36 pictures, they want twenty two at five dollars a piece, <laughs> right? To put into like postcards. So to put into yeah. postcards, so and then you got to bring those yeah. back. Yeah. This was the process. Yep. Yeah. Then you had to bring them back. And then they, they spread them on the table again. On the table. And then again they go, all right, give me that yeah. one, that yeah. one, and that one. That's another twenty two a piece. Yeah. And you had to come back the next day with those three, and then they go, okay, go get me a hundred of these and a hundred of these at seventy nine ninety five yep. a piece. So you went down there and you ordered your fucking, uh, you ordered your fucking thing. And then from there, after you picked up the 100 headshots, or no, 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 no. After you picked up the regular yeah. shots, yeah. you took them to the corner of, I don't know the street, or the one before fucking uh, Ralph's. And there, he made you 100 copies. So all this money already. Then you had to get yeah. the 100 copies, and you had to get, remember, you had to get commercial headshots and theatrical headshots. Yeah, that's right. You, you yes. Had, yeah, so you had to double down, man. So you had to spend. <laughs> yeah, dude. This is crazy what yeah. they did to you. Yeah. Yeah. I used to tell them, after a year, I told them yeah. to suck my dick. <laughs> right. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Send that fucking headshot out. Send that out. I don't give a fuck what it looks like. Yeah. Then they all wanted it real. Yeah. I uh, still remember being shooting Analyze That, and it was such a great scene with me and Anthony Lampaglia in the beginning uh, that I tried to get the scene. The movie wasn't getting released till December. So you tried to get the scene before the movie came out? Yeah, and they wouldn't give it. They, they wouldn't, wouldn't no, give it. They wouldn't give it. I got a call one day from a friend of mine. He goes, you want your scene? I got it. <laughs> what? He goes, I got your scene. Come over to my house. So I went to his house, and he had the scene. But it was backwards. Because when you steal it off the computer, it comes back backwards. <laughs> so I had to take the scene to these guys. Come on, man. You found guys to, to fix this? Dog, there's people who rob Paramount. There's people on a daily basis. Man. That's a business. Yeah, yeah. That's a business. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like, oh yeah, they stole the prelims and they released them. All those Africans in New York that sell you the movies. Yeah, some of them sit in a movie theater and tape it. But there's some guys that are on the up and up. Sure, they know somebody. They pay ten thousand and they get they make ten thousand copies. And they sell them for five dollars a piece. Wow, that's fifty thousand dollars. That's yeah. forty thousand dollar profit. And those movies go from computer to computer. So these guys would steal them off the computers. This guy called me one day. I didn't ask him to do that. He and was like he, just a, got it? he was like an army guy that yeah. knew how to steal. Like the army taught him how to steal. Yeah. And he goes, I got your scene, but you have to flip it. So instead of me being in, in, in the movie, I was yeah. on the left hand side. Yeah. Now I was in the right hand side. It was a nightmare. Then I took it to these guys on Melrose and they're like, All right, bring in the back back. <laughs> yeah. Like that's what these guys did. Sure. Like they had a vault back there and they flipped it and they gave it to me, but they're like, Listen, if you send it out and Paramount sees it, you're going to go to jail. Oh, he said that. They huh? told me that. Oh, like, wow. Just wait the three months. Yeah. 
you know, there was just so many obstacles. So wait a second. So so you didn't send it out? No, no. I threw it away. I was like, I don't even want it in my house. Oh, yeah. I'll, go, I'll wait till December. It ain't going to change my life that much in my mind. <laughs> Did they tell you that after you paid them? What do you mean? Like No, <laughs> they told me even before. They were oh, like, they it's did. not worth uh, you. Yeah. Nobody asked me for money. Like, this was all on the up and up. Wow, well, man. This was way before the podcast. This was just a, just a guy I was complaining to but one night yeah. about the scene. And he's like, let me talk to some guy. And next thing you know, he's like, this guy wants to talk to you. He got the scene for you. Yeah, you know, it's weird, man. You, you don't think about how much piracy there is out there, man. But it's like people, <laughs> like, man. It's, dude, it's like, you think about that, man. It's like people, I got a buddy of mine who, who he'll say, hey, man, uh, why don't you come over and, and watch this movie? I'm like, that movie's out in the theaters. He's like, yeah, no, no, I got it. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, how are you? Like, he always has no, the no, newest movies. Think, what do you think? I'm he, like, I'm like, man, you got to stop stealing all these movies, man. Do you think he stole them? No. Something I don't know. he knows. In that at that movie yeah. theater gives you those previews. Yeah, man. And they say shit on them. Yeah. They'll say shit on them that you're not supposed to see. Like, they'll keep coming up saying property of. Or, right. Well, now know. they have boxes, and it's because it's all online. They have boxes they sell on Amazon that you can buy that you get everything. You get wow. all free TV, free sports, free pay per views. Yeah. They call it, it's called Cody. I mean, they're they're the government's trying. They shut it down every once in a while, but they just build it back up. So wh- how long did it take you? Hmm. To act full time as a full time, like right now, you're. How long have you been a full time actor, just paying the bills with acting for? Uh, probably about twelve years. Really, full time? Maybe, maybe ten years. Ten, ten years. Yeah. Making a living probably twelve. Long. Probably twelve. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, sometimes better than others, you know. Um, but I started working. I started working again in uh, in commercials, commercials, and so. Um, you know, I, I booked a couple commercials from, uh, for, like, I booked that Geico commercial. You know the one where he goes through the airport? Yeah. And then the guy on the sign is me. And so I made just, you know, I paid the bills with that, you know, all year pretty much. And so I would I would book little, like, commercials here and there and, you know, make it, you know, I've shot a lot of commercials. So so then I started, I started uh, doing stand-up. And once I started doing stand-up, then it just, like, I started working TV and film, and and uh, and that was about that was yeah. Are you on a soap opera for a while? I was on a soap opera. I was on The Young and the Restless for three and a half years. Jesus Christ! Yeah, I started out four episodes, and then I told them I said, uh, you know, I, you know, I just, I, I just did, I did the best. I did. I I told myself that this is an opportunity for these people to bring you back. So. Just try to make something out of out of these four episodes and make them want to keep seeing you, man. And How long so, were you acting before you got these four episodes? Oh, uh, this happened. It, I was like, uh, I don't know. I guess I've been acting about 12, 12 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twelve years. How was the transition? I think that was one of the. For me, mm-hmm. I was. You know, after the longest year, my confidence went up with acting. Right. After 17 weeks of work yeah. with all those people, you grow a level. Yeah. Like, I grew a level. From the auditions, I got tough. The longest year, I grew me a level. You know, the directors you work with. Make well, you, you learn as you go, man. You learn you as you go. Learn You're never you prepared go. for anything. No, no. And one day, this is what happened. I did that, uh, you know that, she's a good, Giulini. What's her name? Carla Giulini. She had a TV show for a while on ABC. Yeah. She did the movie American Gangster. She played the lead's wife, okay. Carla Gugili. She's been around for a long time. Check out American Gangster. With Denzel? Yeah, who played uh, the white guy's wife. She had a TV show. Yeah. And it taped in, uh, at the strip club on Lancashire. That episode, I played a bouncer. I was with Daniel Ha for a couple of years. Yeah, man. Then Nancy yeah. left. Wow. Nancy flipped and left. Huh. And in those days, you know, I was doing coke, and I knew the, <laughs> I knew the timing schedules of the right. fucking checks. You do uh, a TV show, dirty. You know, they always tell you TV, ten days, movies or commercials, thirty days. What's it in college? Gugino, G U G I N O. Yeah, yeah, college. Hey, grab one. Go ahead, take two waters. So, I was with uh, Daniel Hoff and great guys. Nothing. I'm not saying anything bad about him. But their check process was a little slow for me. 
they would take too long to pay me and hold the checks. I don't have time for that shit. Oh, yeah. When I owe you a commission, I pay you yeah. the commission. When you got my money, don't fuck around my yeah. money. Well, they're great now, man. No, they're, they're, no, they're, they're great. great. They're now, solid. They're, they're solid. solid. I was with them for three. Yeah. I was with yeah. Dave yeah. and your agent. They were mm -hmm. great. Uh, it was funny how yeah. I had to call them one day and go, where's my money? And they're like, we sent it. I go, no, you didn't. <laughs> that we never. Get. Then they called back and said, we never got the check. And the oh. production company said, we'll send it at three. So I called Danny. I go, listen, if you don't have my money, I'm going over there. If you don't have my money, you're going out the fucking window. And when I got over there, there was a check on the door with my paperwork, all my headshots. And yeah. said, we don't want to represent you no more. The door was locked. Holy I took shit, my check. Man. Yeah. Whoa. And then do you know that? Get the hell out of here. Yeah, man. that was probably right before, because they got me Spider-Man 2. They got me a bunch of shit. She wow. was she. I was wow. with them for four years. Yeah, I left them right before maybe the longest yard, and then maybe like in 2012, I had to take my cat to the vet, and there was, there was Danny. No shit. And he goes, "How you doing?" I go, "How you doing, Danny?" I fucked up that day. I'm sorry. He goes, "Ah, things happen." He goes, "Who you with?" I go, "I'm with some pieces here, agent." He goes, "Give me a call later. Come back." And that was it. Was oh, that was them. it, huh? I was with them for like three years. Oh, man, that's cool, man. They're good people. And yeah. Dave, my guy, is in yeah. New York now. Right. Dave is in New York, and then you have the really good black dude. Kevin Turner, man. Kevin Turner. Kevin Turner, guy. the most monotone human you'll ever meet. Yeah, he will. He's I no mean, emotion Yeah, you know, dude, he's a machine. He's 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 actually, uh, he's a computer. He, uh, <laughs> it's like, my first meeting with him, I was like, man, that, that shit went terrible, man. He just, like, shows nothing. It's like a poker face. Where'd you come from before you signed with Daniel Hopkins? Uh, dude, I, I just had a manager. I had no agent. I did a workshop. I did an agent workshop. And I, I told you, I, I wasn't working in TV and film for, like, uh, six years. So, so I started taking these, these casting director workshops, and, uh, and I took an agent workshop. And uh, next thing you know... He was there. He saw me do a monologue. Called me in his office, and then like I was like, "Who is this man?" Like he is, he is like shows no emotion, no emotion. I was like, "Well, well, that's that's done." And then next thing you know, he called me back, brought me in again, and signed me. So, and the rest has been history, man. And now I just you know I, I just tease him about how awkward he is all the time. <laughs> he's, he's a good dude. He's a good dude, though, man. Stuff. I'm finally he's a happy, good dude, man. I'm happy you got to get on the show and talk a little bit. I gotta yeah, tell you something. Man. You're one of those guys in LA. Every time I see you, you, put a smile on my face, because there's no bullshit in you. Like they don't. Oh well, thanks, man. You're very uh, and you travel a lot doing stand up. Uh, a good, you know, a good amount. I mean, I'm not really getting out on the road too much right now. Um, I, I I'm on um I'm on at the Ha Ha tonight, or uh, I'm sorry, I'm at the Ha Ha Friday night and Saturday. And I'm Friday on the eleven o'clock show, and then Saturday on the eight thirty eight forty five show. So, but I like I get out like. Uh, I get out a little bit. I, I've done Canada a couple times. I I, I headlined up at uh, Yuck Yucks in Toronto. They uh, um, so I did that for a weekend, and then I did I did the Yuck Yucks up in Vancouver. And so like I'll do like you know I, I get out a little bit. I, I headlined in uh, Montana. I did a you know weekend in Montana. So LA is like, a little tough. You know, man. It's just it's uh, tough. Yeah, it's man. Tough to break into this. Uh, stand up is tougher than it's ever been. Yeah. Right now in LA, yeah, you know, people I'm, have no idea how hard it is to move vertically. Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I, I think I'm lucky in the fact that you know the Haha ha Comedy Club, man. They they take good they, care, they, they take yeah, good care of me, man. They 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 you know they give me tons of spots, and uh, and they've really shown me some love over there, and and so that you know I th I've grown a lot because of that club. You know, and uh, it's not an easy it's, club. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not and, an easy and, club. It's and not an easy club. And uh, and then you know, getting spots at the comedy store occasionally now. You know, uh, and so you know, they show me a little bit of love. So we'll see what's up, man. You well, know, you have a positive attitude. You know, you're always smiling. There's never well, a negative thanks, word man. out of you. Like I said, every time I see you, I kind of giggle because you just have a very Genasi qua uh, attitude, and that's really well. I don't, uh, you yeah. know, I I've been taking my daughter to this uh, place, and they do the little dragons like from four to five, and mm -hmm. then the big girls come in. Like I told you, I don't even I, I don't like this area because the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. If the parents yeah. are a bunch of fake fucks, what are the kids <laughs> gonna be like? You know what I'm saying? Sure. 
I'm yeah. sitting there yesterday watching this fucking martial arts class, and this girl comes in, and the other girl stops what she's doing and looks at her, and she goes, I've missed you so much. And it was right out of a fucking coffee shop. And I go, this is why I don't want to raise my daughter here, because the sh- you know the, 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 the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. The parents are fucking fake fucks. Oh, yeah, around. man. Uh, I can't imagine what the kids are like, but it's guys like you. <clears throat> There's a couple of us in this town mm-hmm. that still remain true to who we are. We don't give a fuck about premieres. Right. I don't give a fuck about parties. Right. I don't give a fuck who's in the room. You could suck my dick for all I give a fuck. Right. I wipe yeah. my ass with your white privilege. You know what I'm saying? If, yeah. if Leonard Skinner had no white privilege and the Almond Brothers, who the fuck are you yeah. to have white privilege? Yeah. Do you know exactly, what I'm saying? man. Who exactly, the fuck man. do you think you are to have yeah. white privilege? Whatever yeah. the fuck. So yeah. this area just breeds this... Uh, fakeness and you don't have it so and you're in the business where you have to have it to succeed you and john both of you yeah. have this very like i said john made me feel on a set of stars yeah. stallone look at himself he's a good dude mirror. man you know uh yeah hopefully Bernthal, i emailed him look, last listen, night listen let me tell you man john Bernthal is is one of my best friends in the world and me and that guy have been through a lot of shit together and you know like a lot of a lot of situations man like you know f- all kinds of different situations and he is he is always just been he and he's like that with all his friends man he's just a great dude man he's just on the level you know where you stand with him he was talking to me about yeah. comedy yeah he's interested in comedy yeah he's very interested in doing comedic roles i think his agent suggested right. maybe you should try comedic roles and i was watching right. him in sicario Huh. A couple of weeks ago, and he was great in Sicario. Sure. He tries to fuck the skinny chick, and he tries to kill her and uh, shit. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Benicio puts his finger in his fucking ear and licks it and all this shit to him. It's a great movie. Yeah, but I'm looking at him and I'm like, this guy's got comedy chops. He just mm-hmm. doesn't know it. He hasn't yeah. taken the plunge yet. Well, he was on a sitcom. He was on that show, The Class. It was a sitcom, and and that I love that show. But and now he just gets like. Movies. He, yeah, he's yeah, getting. I mean, dude, movies, he's playing. Yeah. You know, he's 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 <laughs> he's playing the Punisher. You know, it's just one of the most badass roles there are, man. I mean, and he's just killing it. So he's doing he's doing all right right now. But it's you know, I I, I just look, man. Uh, this is a tough business, and if you can be cool with people along the way, you know, and just 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 be cool, man. Yeah, just just it. be fucking cool, man. That's just it. like just just. Do your shit, take care of yourself, uh, push yourself in the ways that you need to, you know, but don't be fucking upset about anything else, you know, just just concentrate on your shit and be cool with everybody. That's it, man. It's crazy the thoughts you get when you're doing this shit and uh, the negativity that comes in your mind and the people that are negative that come in your mind. There's some people, man, that don't want other people don't, to see. They yeah, don't want they other don't people want to see. Yeah, and it kills them. It, and can, it, kill, it, it really it, it does. It fucking kills them. And I cheerlead for people yeah, to man. do well. Like I was watching Dean Delray last night. I'm oh, it's great, it. man. I taped it, and yeah. then I just said, who the mind taping? I got to watch it. Yeah. I watched yeah. Bert, and Bert was great. Yeah. Mark Maron was great. Yep. But Dean brought a tear to my eye. Wow. Because that's one of my boys. Yeah, it's, it's one like of my boys I, it's too, like man. When I watch TV and I see you in a movie, I go, "Yeah, Jesus Christ, that's one of my boys," and that's part of the success story. If mm-hmm. you don't feel that way about the people around you, you're not going to succeed. If you're not genuinely happy, if I can't look you in the face mm-hmm. and go, "Fuck, yeah, fuck," not "fuck," I wish I got that. No, not "fuck." How did he get that? Not fuck. Yeah. Who did he blow? It's, it's, it's exactly but right. Fuck. Yeah, man. Fuck. Yeah, Sean, dude. I'm fucking nah, happy dude. for you. Nah. Because I know it's one step up. We all get up. Yeah. We all got up. It's yeah, Donnie Brasco. That's it, man. We all get up. If yeah. you get up, I get up. Lee gets up as a yeah. comic. Yeah. T- Tiffany Haddish got up. That mm-hmm. means we all step up one. Yeah. Ralphie died. Tiffany Haddish got up. And Louis C.K. jerked off. Yeah. So we all moved up three fucking spots. That's what happens. You move up. Hey. And if you stay on that rotating line, if you stay on that line, you just move up. Yep. And That's it's it, man. just a matter of time before you're there. Yeah. You're, you're in that, That's it, man. You're on Disneyland ride. And it's clicking. Click, uh, click, uh, click, uh, click. Uh, and that's all it is. That's all it is, man. That's all it is. And yeah. When people understand that and you genuinely cheer uh. for your peers from the bottom of your heart, you will grow so fucking much. You will grow so much that... You know, when you see someone like Rogan, 
who was made stars on that podcast. Mm -hmm. How much has he grown since that? Yeah. Because he helped other people grow. When you when you are genuinely honestly yeah, man. healthy about your friends. Mm -hmm. I want Lee to do stand up, but I want right. him to do it the right way so nobody ever takes anything from him. Right. The same way like people come to me and go, Well, you got this because of Rogan. No, I didn't. You forget that, that was me and Spider Man too, bitch. No, dude. Fourteen days hey, for listen, one line. Man. Hey, These yeah, motherfuckers yeah, forget no, everything. No, no, man. Listen, you, you you get everything that you fucking work for, and you put the work in, and 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 just be fucking, just be kind to people that are around you when when you when you're coming up. Because there's an old saying in Hollywood, man. You see the same people On the way up, seeing the same same people As going down as, as you go saw go coming up, up. Yeah. exactly. Fucking Ralph Crandall said that on the honeymooners in 1951 when they were doing that episode about yeah. acting, the string yeah. of Palopanese. Sean, it was a pleasure having you yeah, on the podcast. The bottom. Where can people find you at? Uh, this weekend I'll be at the Ha Ha. No, no, no. Sean Kerrigan. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Sean, uh, Sean Kerrigan dot com. Uh, I'm on um, Instagram as the real Sean Kerrigan and uh, on Twitter uh, at Sean Kerrigan. I love you, brother. So, hey, man, this has been this has been uh, this has been pretty cool, man. Yeah, no, it's I been, always I, wanted to get you on. It just was I, the right time. Yeah, I, I ain't gonna know. lie, man. I was pretty nervous. I was pretty nervous. Who gives you a know, fuck, man? So, no reason to be nervous. You're yeah, around dude. family. Hey, hey, you're this is the, this is cool, the man. Christ killer. Nah, you're he a makes, legend, he brother. Makes you, he makes you nervous. Don't worry, buddy. He makes know, everybody man. nervous. Yeah. Don't forget, I'm gonna be in Philly at the Parks Casino September 14th, and then the following night at DC at the 9:30 Club. With my motherfucker Matt Fultron. And I want to thank my bookie. You know, ever since I started this podcast, people want to know advice. Joey, who's going to win? Who's, I don't fucking know. If I knew who was going to win, you think I'd be here doing this fucking podcast? I'd be in Vegas picking up envelopes and shit, getting my dick sucked by Asian women. Anyway, that's just a fantasy. <laughs> you got to check out my bookie if you're going to gamble. Gambling starts this weekend, preseason. Who, you know, when you're betting on is just as important as who you're betting with. That's why I tell people to bet with my bookie. Listen, that's why I'm urging you to make your way to my bookie. I'm not telling you. I'm urging you. You know why? Because you win, they pay. It's that simple. They have an in-game, live betting, most rewarding player perks in the business. And for you fantasy fucks out there, you can even bet the over on, the, on how many fantasy points a player is going to score each game. How you like me now, bitch? So join now, and my bookie will match your deposit dollar for motherfucking dollar. Who does that anymore? Use promo code CHURCH, C-H-U-R-C-H, to activate the offer. Visit my bookie online today. That's my bookie. Let me spell it for you motherfuckers. If you don't know, grab a pencil or a crayon. M-Y-B-O-O-K-I-E. And don't forget to use promo code CHURCH. And when you're creating your account, to claim up to 1000 in free play. What that means is you play, you win, you get paid, cocksuckers. And I want to give a shout out to Fujisports.com if you're looking for a gi, an under rash, a garment, whatever the fuck you're looking for, Fuji Sports got it for you. I want to thank Sean Carrigan. We had two Carrigans on the show this week. It's Irish week. Yeah, she spells her name wrong. With a K That's or whatever right. the fuck. You know what I mean? I got my man, the fucking flying Jew, aka the Christ killer, and your Uncle Joey. I love you, motherfucker. Stay black. Have a tremendous Labor Day and eat fucking a hot dog for me. Kick this mule, Lee.